I'm Brett Nelson. I'm a professor with Conestoga College. I'm part of the School of Workforce Development. I put together a series of videos to help our students um, and anyone else who's interested in building models in a package called Jamsim. What I want to focus on today is building processes, modeling processes using the software package. So I have a number of different sort of process elements or different kinds of processing stages that you might encounter, especially in a manufacturing setting of things that you want to model. And hopefully with this, this will get, will get you started in building um, your own model of your process. Okay, let's get started. A lot of processes will start this way with um, so, uh, basically a supplier, something that introduces elements into the system. So if you're used to a value stream map, this would be familiar to you where you have a raw material supplier introducing raw material into your value stream. Um, JamSim represents this with this combination of a SIM entity, so that is the thing or the raw material that's being passed into the system, but it's very abstract. It can be um, it can be physical goods, it can be a piece of steel, it could be an engine casting, but it could also be a person or a busload of tourists or a customer order. Um, so it really can be anything that's appropriate for your model. So, and, and you don't particularly define it other than a shape and a name. And I'll get into more details in a second video of how to improve the graphics of your system. Today I just want to, or for this video, I just want to focus on the actual processing elements. So we have some SIM entity, whatever it is, um, that's appropriate for your model, and it's created by these entity generators. So both the SIM entity and the entity generator come from this process flow um, menu here, which is where most of what I'm going to show you today comes from. The generator then has a number of inputs that you want to define. Um, the first arrival time, for example, when you start your simulation, uh, does it start generating entities right away? Does it does it introduce product or people into your system immediately, or or is there some wait time or some delay? All right, inter arrival time. So how frequently do entities arrive, and how often or how many come at a time? So I've got mine where one arrives every half minute. Now, uh, I'm speeding up my model here at eight times speed, so it's take, uh, so you're not seeing it only every half minute, you're seeing it come quicker. And then you define the prototype entity if, with the generator. You tell it what is it that it is generating. <clears throat> All right, you can also set a maximum number. You can say it's default to infinity, but you can say that there's a limit um, or a maximum number that it will generate um, regardless of how long your model runs. Okay, so like I said, a lot of models are going to start this way with a, a defined entity and a generator. <clears throat> we'll use SIM entities um, and generators in other parts of the model, um, and I'll show you those as we go along. Okay, I'm using a simple conveyor to connect these different blocks. The conveyor also comes from the um, menu here. And for that, you're just defining where does it go, what does it, connect, what does it connect to, and how long does it take elements to travel across the length of the conveyor. All right. So the simplest process, I think, to model um, is a combination of a queue and a server. So think of a server as anything that does work or acts on an entity that arrives. So it could be um, a milling machine, it could be a barista who works on a customer order, it could be a barber who works on a customer, it can be virtually anything you want. Um, and for the server, uh, the main thing that's defined is the service time. So this is um, the time required to process the entity. Right. And so I've defined it as 30 seconds. You can define it in um, any valid unit of measurement. This can also be a formula, which I'm not going to get into in this particular um, video, but you define how long does it take to, to 
process the entity once it arrives. Every server needs a queue. Um, it can only operate on one entity at a time, so if there's additional ones coming in, this model needs a place for them to park, and so that's the queue. So effectively this is like your WIP, um, work in process, and, and these are your process steps. So if you were to model a basic value stream map, or take a, essentially your value stream map, and model it using Jamsim, you wouldn't need anything more complicated than um, an entity defined, an entity generator, a series of queue and servers, queue, server, you know, whip, process, whip, process, um, and exit to a customer. All right, but we can do more interesting things since we're using this software package. One of the useful uh, sort of activities that you can do or processors that you can do is called a duplicate. And, and I think of it more as, in practical terms, as something that's going to divide the incoming entity into a, a number of entities and, and pass them out onto multiple channels. So this could represent all kinds of different things. So you could have you know, a, uh, a piece of material, steel or wood, whatever, that's cut into pieces. And then, like a rod uh, that's cut into, like bar stock that's cut into discs or blanks, um, or a piece of glass that's cut into s smaller pieces to make mirrors or table components or something like that. Uh, okay, and so with the duplicate tool or function uh, from the menu here, you define the next component, just as you would with a server, so where does the entity go to, um, but then you have a target component list, and with that you can check any number of additional places where this incoming entity will go. <clears throat> and they're, each one of those is a duplicate of whatever is coming in. So. Basically, the, the original gets passed through to the first uh, uh, destination in next component, and copies of that, or duplicates of that same entity, are sent out on these alternate paths. Now, I've been a little bit um, sneaky here, and instead of uh, sending the same thing through each um, out of this whole system, if, if I want to truly represent, you know, uh, raw milk comes in on a tanker and then gets divided into buttercream, heavy cream, and 2%, I don't want the same thing uh, being passed on each channel. So I'm using a set graphics function here. And all this does, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't work on the entity at all, it takes no time. It just changes the appearance. So I'm taking advantage of that by defining three different shapes using three more sim entities that I've just dragged in here. And then I've changed their shape. Uh, I've, if you right click on this, you come up with this menu, it's this is sim entity six. I've come down here and said change graphics. And I've just changed it from the default sphere to a pentagon, but you can change it to anything you want. Um, I'm going to show this in another video, but if you really want to jazz up your model, you can import JPEGs or pictures that you created, um, or icons, something from the internet, um, to really make your model make more sense and to be more visually appearing, appealing. Uh, but for now, I'm just using the basic shapes. Okay, so I have three different sim entities that I've added to my model, and then each set graphics. Uh, function here uh, names one of them in its graphics list. Now you can be fancier, you can uh, have some logic that will decide what graphic it will choose based on some logic, but in my case I'm just setting to the default to say the choice is always the first graphic in this list, and the first graphic in this list is Sumanity 5. And, and I've got similar definitions for the second and third channel. So what happens is a sphere comes in, 
and a star um, and two other shapes exit the system. Okay, and so then you can define these as to be whatever you want them to be. <clears throat> Another common processing element that you might want in your model is an assembly operation. So this one's fairly straightforward. It will take any number of cubes or items from any number of cubes and put them together and create an assembly. So this is where you, you define a weak queue list. So I've defined queue five, seven, and six, a little bit out of order here, but these three queues. I told it it'll take 20 seconds to do the assembly, send the material on to conveyor 11, and the prototype entity here, SIM entity 9, is what the assembly will look like once, it, once it's done. So this one, um, it, it's like a change graphics built into the tool. Um, so you, again, you need to bring a SIM entity in. I've made this one just a circle. And the assembly two will take whatever these separate components are and consume them in the assembly operation and pass on this new entity. And that kind of makes sense from an assembly point of view, right? If you're putting a bunch of materials together, you're no longer sending out a batch of components, you're sending out something new, an assembly. All right. The combine operation is kind of similar to the assembly, but with this exception that a new thing is not created, or isn't, it doesn't pass on an assembly, it actually passes on the original thing. Uh, so I brought in an object, it comes into a queue, and this uh, combine operation, I've just renamed it as labeling, um, as, by way of an example. So then this combine operation, uh, again, it has a service time. How long does it take to, to do the work? And the wait queue list is the, I've renamed this instead of leaving it as a generic queue name. I've said this is the whip of bottles. And then I have labels coming in to another queue. And the labeling operation combines a bottle and a label, but it passes on the bottle. Right. So again, uh, you need to figure out which makes sense for your model. Is it is it passing on something new, or is it passing on the original thing with something else added to it? So this is what I've chosen. This is a good example. Adding a label to a bottle or a carton, it, it doesn't. You're not sending out an assembled carton. It doesn't look any different. It just has a label on it. Um, right. And then I just used a simple entity generator and a sim entity to define what it is that's being combined with this primary entity. Another common thing that you're going to need in, um, in a process model, especially a manufacturing model, is some sort of a packaging operation toward the end. The pack here needs a queue, right? so materials that are going to be available to package, and the number of entities to go into to be packed at a time, how long does it take per entity to pack, and what is it going to get packed into? So you have to define this prototype entity container. And so again, uh, this is like the sim entity, but it's a but it's a special entity. It's actually a there is an entity container to pull from the menu, an entity that can hold one or more other entities, right? So it's a special one. So you drag this one into your model and the pack operation, then you choose your entity container from the list of available containers. Now, <clears throat> you might see in a moment, so this will take four of these entities, pack them into the container, and pass it on to the next process. Now that doesn't look quite right, because typically you don't end up with a box, like it's like an invisible box, or, or things are glued to the outside of it. So that doesn't quite look right. So one option is to change max per line to two, so it will pack one, two, three, four, 
There we go. So by changing maximum per line, now it changes the appearance of the entities in the package. But my next step would be to set this to false. And now the next one that gets packaged, you won't actually see the entities. You just see the package move on. So that's a little more realistic, I think. Here we go. Let's just do a quick watch. Okay, so then just, now it's just the package. And the last thing you'll need in a simple model is an entity sync. And I think of this like the customer. It can be an internal customer or an external customer, regardless. Um, and all the sync does, there's no logic or smarts or timing to it. It just consumes whatever it receives. And, and so that material or the customer or whatever it is, or the customer order or the piece of paperwork, or the airplane, um, it exits the system. I'm going to stop with this. This is a good uh, place to get you started. I hope you found this useful. Um, enjoy using JamSim, the simulation tool, and I'll see you in the next video.